Today I received a package from Protectly. It contains the VP2420 2.5 gigabit ethernet mini PC firewall appliance. Um, when you receive a package like this in the mail, you know it's gonna be a fun day. So let's take a look. As you can see, this is labeled the Vault Pro. Um, the Vault Pro series is uh, Protectly's higher end uh, models that have higher specifications um, and uh, more features that aren't available in their lower end models. Uh, and these type of models are great for if you wanna run intrusion detection, intrusion prevention type software on your firewall or router, or, or if you wanna do VPN, open VPN or WireGuard type um, uh, services on your router, you need the extra performance. So as we open this up, as you can see, here is the Protectly VP2420, uh, 2.5 gigabit ethernet for interface uh, model. Um, this model actually, I reviewed the 2410 model, which are four one gigabit ethernet interfaces. And this model looks uh, exactly the same, like they put it in the same chassis and everything. So, which is nice, because uh, these have like a nice, uh, the, the pro models have a nice, uh, Vault Pro models have a nice distinctive look to them. Um, it, just, it just looks and feels a little more premium than uh, their uh, more basic models. Uh, it definitely, definitely has a nice build and feel to it. Like I mentioned even on my website review, it even has like nice big rubber like, feet so that it actually feels nice and solid when they actually have to set it down on the surface. There's like little details like that makes it really nice. As you can see on the back, it has all the, the same basic ports as actually the um, that the VP2410 has. It has three point, yeah, two USB 3.0 ports, it has a HDMI port and a display port. Um, and it's got a USB 3. Point, or a USB C port, I should say, and a console, USB console port, which I actually did write, do a more detailed write-up about that on my review on the, the VP2410, which is actually pretty interesting because I never really played with those before. And it's actually pretty neat to be able to log in um, to your firewall appliance, or at least see the display via a console without actually having to have a monitor hooked up directly to this box. I can just use my PC through USB and that could be like I'm on the console like booting it up, which is pretty cool. The model I have, of course, I didn't get uh, Wi-Fi with it, um, but there's places for the antennas for the front and back for cellular and Wi-Fi antennas because um, you can get those with this model. Um, I don't really recommend you do that if you're going to run like OpenSense or PFSense or something on this box because um, I don't think there's, in, especially internal modules because they don't really work, I don't think, or are not recognized by FreeBSD, the drivers aren't there um, for, for those. Um, but external ones and stuff, you know, models will work just fine with it because it just uses an Ethernet connection to this and you can just use whatever is connected to this as a gateway. The VP2420 comes equipped with the Intel Celeron J6412 CPU, four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interfaces, up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, eight gigabytes of built-in eMMC storage, M.2 SATA SSD, optional 2.5 inch SATA SSD, optional TPM module, optional internal Wi-Fi module, optional internal 4G LTE module, an HDMI and display port, USB-C port, two USB 3.0 ports, a SIM card slot, a micro SB console port, and AMI or core boot BIOS firmware. If you're considering purchasing a Protectly, you may have noticed that their boxes cost a little bit more than if you got the equivalent hardware of a generic brand off a, a store such as AliExpress. Um, but if you're a U.S. resident, especially, um, there are benefits to order from Protectly because since they are a U.S. based company, um, it, one of the big benefits is customer service, customer support. If you um, have an issue with your box, um, within a few hours of putting in a ticket, it's a business day. Um, I don't know about the weekends; it might be a little longer, but but within a few hours, they say sometimes they can actually ship out. A replacement if they determine that you know you have faulty hardware or or maybe you're just not satisfied with the box you got and you want to exchange it for another one sometimes they they do those sorts of things for customers and they can do it very quickly um because they don't have to ship it overseas i can't imagine if i have an issue with a box i ordered off aliexpress and waited two to four weeks to get it and have to ship it back and probably pay for shipping to get it sent back um and wait another two to four weeks to get it back unless they cross shipped it um, that would be a long time to be without a system. Like, yeah, you could be without a system for a month, half to, or to two months, you know, <laughs> depending how long the shipping actually takes. If you are a US-based resident, you can actually 
get their boxes within a few days as quick the shipping's pretty quick and it's free shipping if you order from their store and Amazon if you order from Amazon you probably get you can get free shipping there as well the benefit of if you order directly from their store is you can actually customize the box exactly how you want it. they have a lot more options than Amazon Amazon usually just has a bare bones version and like maybe an eight gigabyte model with 120 gigabyte SSD in it these uh, vault pro boxes that I'm reviewing I've been reviewing they actually support two drives so you can have a secondary drive which is um, can be much larger than the primary drive of what they offer on their website but you could upgrade your to your own um, SSD the second benefit besides good customer service um, if you're in the US especially is you could get core boot um, functionality core boot is actually replaces the um, standard AMI BIOS that actually comes um, with the protected box and all the other non-protected boxes and most BIOSes use AMI um, but you can replace the AMI firmware with core boot and core boot gives um, several benefits such as improved security and you may have a little quicker boot times um, and uh, yeah there's some other features like net boot that you can you can actually boot an OS directly from the network um, from online sources which is really cool you don't you don't even have to have uh, a local server set up to actually do that. You can actually just pull it straight from the internet, which I tested that on the VP2410, which is really cool. I, I put that in my review, how that actually works. I tried to do it with the 2420, but since the firmware just got released, I'm not quite sure that uh, that works exactly yet, unless I was doing something wrong. They have to customize and tweak each of the core boot firmware for every um, hardware appliance that they create. So they, it's, yeah, it's a little bit of a slow, tedious process. They didn't even have core boot ready when I, when I actually got the review unit. Then. But since then, I actually have gotten it and got it installed. And I actually wrote a review on that, or not a review, a guide on how to actually do that um, to change out the firmware, which is actually pretty simple. I wanted to mention that those are the two biggest selling points for buying Protectly. And, and that those two things alone could help justify the little bit extra cost that you might have um, depending on what hardware you're getting, you might be able to get a lot more hardware for cheaper if you go a generic brand, but you have to be aware that you might not get the support that you might want or need if you find that you need it. Um, and you know, you won't, might not be able to use core boot. Sometimes people are able to get core boot to work on some of these generic boxes that have the identical hardware, but you're not guaranteed that that will work. Um, but if you order from Protectly and you pick core boot as an option, um, they'll make sure it works before you get it. Um, I want to give one example of how their support actually, um, how quick it is and how, how great their support is. Um, we found, I got a couple, um, I got feedback from a couple users actually, um, about a potential incompatibility with a 16 gigabyte memory stick. Um, uh, and it happened to be the exact same one. So I was like, well, maybe something weird with that particular model. And then I think, uh, Protectly already had probably a couple of um you know customer service um tickets in already for this issue and i just happened to to post about it on reddit just to make sure other people are aware about this issue and it and we you know within a, a day or two because this happened on the weekend when i started finding this out from feedback and posted it on reddit on monday they actually after I posted that, they actually came back and started, they were already starting to look at the issue and they got, they've already probably received a couple RAM sticks from a couple people uh, that were incompatible so they could test them on their hardware. Uh, and they were already looking into the fix and two days later, they actually kind of, they've identified the, the issue. And the issue was changing out the memories uh, to different size because the BIOS for some reason, a core boot, only core boot, not AMI, uh, where there was an issue where it wouldn't recognize, had trouble training the, to the new memory that was put in there. So it was like a BIOS training issue. So, cause at the time, anytime a new stick is in there, the BIOS has to identify it so that all that memory could be fully utilized by the system. Uh, and that usually happens, you know, behind the scenes, you know, when you think about it, like when you put a memory stick in, I don't, I don't really think about it. So I was talking to him about that's how it actually works. I'm like, yeah, it's so transparent that you don't even realize it's happening in the, in the background, right? It just does it. Um, but for some reason with this particular um, core boot version, the first version they released, it had an issue with it and they're already working to, to patch it and fix it. But I wanted to mention that that was a good example. Within a few days, they worked on the problem, found the problem, and then they said the following week or whenever, 
They might actually have a, a candidate patch for it, for core boots. This will be an important core boot patch because if you don't install this patch and you want to change the size of memory you have, whether you want higher or potentially lower, but most people will upgrade to higher, you know, larger amounts of RAM, right? If it won't work, your system will be unstable and it'll crash and do all kinds of weird stuff. So you have to upgrade your core, the core boot firmware to the new fixed version before you decide to change any of your RAM out. Or you can switch back to the AMI BIOS because it all, everything works there. So, um, so this is, a, this will be a critical core boot patch that you will want to install if you want to upgrade your RAM. So there's like a weird quirk there. <laughs> I just wanted to explain that a little bit as an example and also to, to give you a little heads up if you're having an issue with core boot and RAM sizes and swapping out RAM. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a quirk there. One more thing I like to mention about core boot on the VP2420 is that it has extra security features that are typically only found on the VP4600 series, which is their six port uh, flagship model, it's their big daddy, right, <laughs> uh, of their appliances that they offer. I'm glad to see that they, some of those extra nice security features that Core Boot offers is now available on a four port model because the four port models are typically, in my opinion, a lot more budget friendly for home users, especially home enthusiasts that don't want to spend a ton of money on their network. So I'm happy to see that trickle down into their one of their higher end you know four port models because now it is those extra features are becoming a lot more affordable because uh, core boot still offers some security features on you know other on all the other appliances that have core boot but you get extra stuff that it's really nice to you know, like um, check in every stage of the process you know um, to make sure nothing is is um you know been tampered with so they they actually said they actually told me that uh, the, the boot process will actually halt if it detects that there's any, been any tampering with the firmware because the checksums and various things aren't, um, you know, aren't the same as what should be. And so it will actually halt the process and then load a read only version of the firmware. So it won't, you so say you're actually, your system won't go down, but it'll actually boot to a safe backup of the current version of the firmware that you're running which is very cool because then it allows you to get back and actually fix your real, you know, the flaw, the uh, whatever malicious code or whatever is in, got into your firmware. You can go back and replace it with a clean version, clean copy of it, and then you're off, you know, running a normal again. But but it'll actually boot in a read-only mode to keep your system safe, um, your firmware safe at least, so that it's not doing stuff that without you even knowing about it. So this the, that's one thing about Core Boot is it protects you from these malicious, uh, you know, uh, this malicious attacks or code that happens at the firmware level, which would be practically invisible to your operating system. So you can have a lot of bad things happening there and not even realize it because it won't report because if the hardware is telling the, the OS that it's doing something completely different than it actually is, it could hide what it's actually doing. Um, so it's very sneaky, right? So, he, so you want to make sure it's as secure is as secure as possible, which is why I, I uh, now that I am aware of what Core Boot does and, and all of its, uh, and all of its benefits and security features, I actually you know don't like the idea of not having Core Boot on my Edge router now, just for the fact that if something gets in there, then it's it's it, it controls the the you know, majority of my network, right? So um, if, if that's compromised, then, then all, all bets for everything else is off, right? I mean, you know, and maybe you can exfiltrate all kinds of information. But, you know, home users are probably less of a target of that, but if it first it happened to be an easy drive-by attack that can happen, you know, just like there's blasting it out there to everybody to get, um, it's good to have that extra protection just in case you get caught up in some of those malicious events that occur widespread. And if you're a high-value target, somebody important <laughs> or whatever, right? You might be more of a target than, than um, most of us, right? So the more layers of security you can have in general, the better. Um, you know, you want your firewall and your router and stuff to be the most secure appliance on your network. Um, <laughs> you don't want it to be the least secure, right? Because then you're gonna, you're gonna be in trouble. And the goal for my videos is helping you to make your network a little more secure as well. 
It doesn't have to be as secure as a corporate network necessarily unless you really want to take the time to lock it down that much. But you, you still want your, you got to find a balance where you can still use your network. I don't, I don't, I personally want my network secure, but I don't want it locked down necessarily as much as a corporate network because you can't really do anything fun on a corporate network. And even if they're insecure services, if you lock, if you kind of lock it down a little bit or isolate it, you can still use some of those things that you know, even if you know they're a little bit insecure or not the most secure things. Um, you just gotta be careful how you expose them to the internet and to the rest of your network. I'd like to give a shout out to Protectly for uh, sending me a VP2420 to review, as well as my 2410 that I reviewed on my website a few months ago. I didn't have my YouTube channel set up yet, so I didn't do a video review on that unit. I hope you found this review of the VP2420 interesting and informative, even though it's just a kind of a quick high level view of it. I have a, a little more details on my website if you wanna go check that out. I'll put the link below. Um, I usually go in a little more detail with my website content and my video content, I'm kind of keeping it a little bit lighter, a little bit um, easier to, to produce and edit and maintain since I don't have a ton of time. I got to split it across a bunch of things, not just my website and producing YouTube videos. Uh, I'm going to sign off for now. So I hope you have a good day. Thanks.